But out one night to make a little round, I met little Sadie and I shot her down. Went back home and jumped into bed. Forty-four pistol under my head. I woke up in the morning about half past nine. The hacks and the buggy standing in line. Gents and gamblers standing around, taking little city to bury in the ground. I began to think of what a deed I'd done. I grabbed my hat and away I'd run. Made a good run, just a little too slow. They overtook me and Jerry. My people, is your boy, the Luke. How you doing? Glad to have you here. Let me cancel out of this so it doesn't keep playing. For those of you who are not familiar with that song, it is um, Little Sadie performed by Crooked Still. And it is part of the um, soundtrack for The Last of Us Part Two, And it actually came on this mini vinyl. Let me swap back to color. Um, for this it, it came on this mini vinyl that i got um i i got like ordered this thing uh way back when like e3 era um and they made a special edition for the like first showing off of the game in a major way um that was like red and black this one is like blue and black but it's really cool and basically there's one song on either side if you can see that and it even has ellie's I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, Ellie's Switchblade on it. It's really cool, kind of cute, and uh, it sounds just as good as you would hope and expect and dream. So um, that's that's kind of cool, too. So I, I just listened to this uh, a little while ago, so I figured I might as well bring it on the show. We might get copyright struck because of it, but this episode's going to have a fair amount of things that might get struck for various reasons so i said screw it let's just go for it um naturally the big point of the uh discussion today is that uh we are talking about cyberpunk 2077 now before we do that i want to have a warm-up topic so we're going to talk about something really cool that i'm really heartbroken about first in addition to my hair yes it's getting all sheared and cut off um probably tomorrow quite likely tomorrow um which desperately needs to happen it's real it's real bad this this is like it's awful um anyway i want to start up with a, a warm-up story then we're going to jump into looking through the actual um uh trailer or gameplay footage that was shown off on twitch by cd project red um or cd project red if you're pronouncing it the way they do and we're going to go through step by piece or step by step, piece by piece. Now, I don't want to 
I, I want to be completely transparent, completely honest, completely upfront. First and foremost, I um, have watched a little bit of this. I watched like the first 15 minutes. Then I said, you know what? This would be awesome to react to live on the show. So I kind of mentally checked out over the last couple of days uh, in preparation for this very moment. So I have seen some of it. Uh, it's not all new to me, but... Uh, most of what we're going to be watching is going to be new to me. Um, we're going to skip the first eight minutes, though, because there is nudity involved in the first eight minutes. And um, that is something that will get the the channel flagged unless I do a bunch of stuff to prepare for it beforehand. And then it's not going to get live streamed. So there was just a lot of issues on it. But all told, we're going to watch it. We're going to go through it. It's going to be great. Um, and... I mean, just from what I've seen already. Oh, my body is ready. My body is ready. But there are some things that are just interesting and I, we're going to talk about. It. We're going to play through the video. We're going to look at it, break it down and uh, share real time thoughts. And I'm going to be listening to your thoughts. We're going to break it down and it's going to be it's going to be pretty Gucci. The last thing I want to say, housekeeping wise, um, before we jump into it, is that uh, the next critique is finished. It is uh, actually in the midst of of rendering as as we speak um i paused it in order to prepare for this that's what caused the the slight delay um i needed to start it rendering in order to hit my patreon deadline so that patreon subscribers um which some of you might be patreon subscribers i'm, I'm not sure uh some of you guys will get early access to the video so you'll be able to watch the full um like 50 minute critique before everyone else and i think it's going to be pretty cool so um, buckle in and then we can get we're going to get back into the the critiques and, and all of that it's just been a crazy last three weeks or so with moving school starting moving again like lot, lots of stuff going on but enough dilly dallying are you ready is your body prepared for what i'm about to i was gonna say insert into it mentally but that just sounded weird but i said it anyway so i guess i'm, I'm a failure as well the first thing I want to talk about, just because I just came across this and uh, I thought it was hilarious um, and also kind of awesome. So naturally, I want to share it with you. This is uh, The Ripper, the disturbing visceral games project that never was. This is an article off of Polygon. Don't worry. Uh, it's an archived link, so they aren't getting any ad revenue from it. Um because they're they're awful but uh the ripper was apparently a game that r roughly a decade ago ea was developing um centered around the story of jack the ripper where you play as jack the ripper and he's actually the hero of the game now if this already sounds kind of terrible <laughs> kind of awful you're not uh necessarily wrong um and it, as we go down it, it gets even better this is some of the concept art i believe like it's i can I, I you'll start to see why this got dumped really really quickly basically the author describes how he went up to like a, a press meeting for dead space and then the receptionist accidentally said are you here for the um jack the ripper whatever and everyone like freaked out looked at her grabbed her and was like you can't say that you can't talk about that they shoved him into a a an elevator and and pass him off and they're like please don't tell anyone that you heard that please it's super secret you can't do that and so eventually it came out that jack the ripper was a thing but when it eventually leaked it had already been canceled the reason being um uh, these details that i'm about to describe to you um right here right now so EA, quote, EA was working on a game about Jack the Ripper. You would play as the Ripper himself, a real-life serial killer, in a game that would be unthinkably bloody, brutal, and controversial. Your victims would be modeled after the actual victims. Brilliant idea. What possibly could go wrong? Uh, and you would recreate the real murder scenes. For those of you familiar they were not good <laughs> like there were like uh uterus it like there were all sorts of body parts removed like it just was not a, a nice place the last like polly nichols i think her name was she uh was like fully dissected it was horrifying um so i'm not sure how you could justify that even with their twist on the story uh which is 
here's the catch in the game jack the ripper was actually the hero as his victims were vampires in disguise so, so he, he was was jack the ripper the vampire slayer that's that's uh literally what this is <laughs> jack the ripper the vampire slayer um and uh, like i don't know how you would justify like oh i'm a vampire slayer so i need to fully mutilate this vampire lady and you have to recreate the the scene of the crime like if you're gonna do this you got to do it like assassin's creed syndicate did where he's like the villain and he comes in and it's set in that time period and it's kind of fun you could do this with like a sherlock holmes spinoff sort of thing where you're playing as a detective hunting down jack the ripper you could do that sort of thing but you can't really do it glorifying the uh <laughs> the serial killer it's, I'm sorry, like it's so ridiculous I'm like apparently this project what's even more amazing what's even more amazing about this is that apparently the game got to be roughly 95% finished like they finished this game effectively they were just like tweaking bugs and all that and yet it, it still got cancelled um, which is just remarkable uh I, I mean the art style yeah it looks like it could be kind of cool and like the styling of jack the rip like you could do that sort of thing but just like abraham lincoln vampire slayer it's not going to make sense and trying to ground it in reality is only going to piss people off because <laughs> you're never going to get to that point it's never going to be grounded because he was a serial killer and horribly mutilated multiple women like i to be honest like i'd probably still play it but like that's just because I'm a terrible person. I mean, we're all we're all terrible, but whatever. But I, one the other thing I want to mention is that this was in the age of um, uh, Dante's Inferno is what it was called. What year did Dante's Inferno launch? We're gonna look this up. Um, Inferno. Dante's Inferno was a game that launched February fourth of two thousand and ten. It's actually one of my favorite sort of hack and slash games. I actually much prefer it up until like the last hour or so uh over like god of war the original um and mainly just because like the original god of war it's just it's so over the top i don't sympathize with the character at all but at least in dante's inferno there's like a story the lore is really really cool it's set in hell but having grown up in the west and with a heavy like christian upbringing all of like the levels and everything that they they mention in that version of hell it hits home so hard for me and it's so interesting and fascinating so i love seeing that representation in a weird sick way um and if you hadn't haven't played dante's inferno i actually recommend it if you can pull out like a 360 i'm not sure if it's backwards compatible on the xbox one if somebody knows that in the chat i'd love to hear um but yeah no it's it's a pretty baller game. I actually really, really enjoy it. But if you don't remember, Dante's Inferno was also developed by EA or published by EA rather. Um, and the interesting thing about it was that it was also considered to be heavily controversial because you're this, you're Dante and you're going into hell fighting uh, slain souls and enslaved demons, these types of things. And what they actually did, EA actually hired people to go out and protest pretending to be uh, like religious right fundamentalist activists. And so they hired these people to go out and to, you know, hold up signs and pick it outside their offices because then the news people would come and interview them, take pictures. They'd get, oh, picketing begins over this game, Dante's Inferno. It's just free press. And it was a big scandal when it came out that they had actually paid these protesters to do that. They justified it as a PR stunt. The, the protesters never claimed to be representing their own ideas. Um, they dodged all of that. Like, it just ridiculousness um jake's larzul five bucks let's watch cyberpunk already thank you my friend thank you for the five bucks i i will uh we'll jump into it in just a moment don't worry um so yeah no nah, I'm, I'm bounced between screens um so they, like this just seems like a terrible idea uh and i don't blame them but 
Yeah. Uh, the original budget for the mo- or for the game was twenty five million dollars, not top dollar for a high end game by twenty eighteen standards. But on the scale of Dead Space, which was a cornerstone of the studio that had recently been rebranded as Visceral Games, Ripper and other games would fall under this brand. The Ripper project expanded quickly, going from four developers uh, to twenty within a week. Together, they worked to create a third person action adventure game in the God of War vein, but with more emphasis on story and character. Like, uh, I they thought they pictured it as a, a franchise launch. There was a Ripper movie that was being negotiated with screenwriters and a director. Trademarks were registered for both the game and the movie. Like, look at all of this work they put into this. Look at all these things that they did. They they really went for it, um, and like totally totally nailed it. And then. It gets to the end and it's actually just heartbreaking and like they tried to add in multiple it kind of just crashed and burned we don't really have time to get into all of the intricate details um but it actually is really really fascinating what this could have been like i after seeing this i kind of want to try it like it sounds really cool and weird um but i, I don't want to spoil the punchline for this so um i will i will uh send out a link for this this um here we'll go noir because we're talking about jack the ripper let me send out an archive link um so that you guys can try this archive and i apparently can't type um da 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 I can't, I can't type. I suck at typing. Okay. This is not working guys. I'm, I'm, I'm a joke. Okay. Well, I'll do that after the show. I'll do that after the show. I'll leave that open and we'll do that after the show. Um, I'll, I'll put the link in the uh, comment section and I'll pin it so that you guys can, uh, can see it. Um, if you want to, cause it, it is really fascinating. It's a really interesting story to see how it all went down and, and what happened. Um, cause da- game development is weird. It really is. But here we go. So it is time. Let us jump over here. So a couple of caveats before we begin. Um, there are limitations for uh, audio just for copyright reasons. I'm not going to be able to play the uh, same audio that they played out. It shouldn't matter because we're going to be talking over it anyways. And if you missed out on the beginning of the stream, we're going to be doing um, uh, eight minutes in or starting eight minutes in so that we can... Um, avoid all of the potential things that could get the video flagged, which is kind of to be expected. So the very first thing we open, uh, in nine's, uh, apartment and, uh, there's butt cheeks, which I'm already sold. I don't know about you guys. I should put the chat on is the chat. Yeah, there it is. Um, V did I, what did I say? What did I say? I don't know. Hi, Nitrous. Be- Hi, everybody. I set all of the settings up so it should be um, near real time. Did I say nines? <laughs> I said, wow. Oh, gosh. It's a good day. Um, yeah. <laughs> V's, not nine. <laughs> I don't even know. So um, we start out in in nines. I said nine again. Uh, V's, uh, this is going to happen like 50 times. Now that I'm thinking about nine, I don't know. Where did I get nine? I don't know where I got it. So, so we're we're in her apartment. Um, in the game, you can play as a male or a female. And I think that's important to stress because uh, you can actually build your character. And actually, I should be able to go back and uh, let, me, let me do this. I should be able to control this. Yeah. So if we look at the character creator, I can I can control this all by my lonesome. Um, by the way, this was streamed on Twitch and set a record for the the most highly viewed stream of this year, like, uh, apparently. So it, it was like half a million. It was just absolutely crazy. Um, so we start out, the one thing I will say before we get into it, the UI does seem to be the weak link here. Um, it might just be that I'm watching it like on a video and it doesn't communicate itself very well when you're doing that. I totally get that. When I look at the UI for all sorts of games, just watching it, I don't get it. I think it looks horrible and it's not functional. And then like I actually play the game and I get it. So that's probably part of it. But with this, there does seem to be a consistent issue with the UI, um, which I, I don't really know what to, to make of it, but 
nonetheless it's there um let me rearrange these things there we go so uh the full um character creation is right there if i hit play again you can choose as male or female and this is going to go throughout the entirety of the game there's one set voice as far as i'm aware for each character so kind of like in the vein of fallout 4 you pick male or female they're going to use the same voice so you don't have like the sort of saints row weird selection of voices um this is what i mean with with ui like this is a bit of a mess let's just be completely honest yes it is on the left side it's like an id card so this is supposed to be um like your driver's license almost if you want to think about it that way and then on the right side you pick your your backstory which is actually a really cool way of doing this so um there's like childhood heroes samurai rocker boy johnny silverhand uh solo of fortune morgan blackhand or a uh, corporate god saburu arasaka so i'm assuming by picking one of like whichever one of these select it's going to have um an impact on uh, future interactions how you interact with characters what your starting opinion of somebody is and what their opinion of uh, of you is so that could be really interesting key life event death of a sibling uh, ran away from home or first big kill these are all like things which there's no easy way to tie this into a narrative like if we try to build a quest like let's just build a metaphorical quest real quick how are we going to implement the fact that this girl's like we'll just pick the one they they chose their sibling died when they were young how are we going to tie that together back later in the game like am i going to have a quest where i encounter um an individual whose sibling is dying or about to die or something and that adds a whole new context and that makes uh v not nine v freak out um and it becomes much more real for her or him or if they ran away from home do we have to like if we interact with orphans or something like that did, did that just like does that add issues um like it's it's just weird i'm not really sure how this would be tied together but clearly if they ask you it's the like second thing you do in the game clearly there must be some reason for it, a significant reason um why night city so why are you here unfinished business ex-lover in town uh something to prove so uh, more than anything i think these decide like key emotional traits for you like on the left side of key event we have death of a sibling so it's more familial so like you're very family focused you're focused on the people around you and you're very protective of them ran away from home is sort of the opposite of this the antithesis of this it's uh, i i've left my past behind my family behind and i'm moving on and then the third first big kill this is like once you've moved on and you've taken that first big step in this new world that is night city so it kind of defines your level of maturity in a way um why night city unfinished business ex lever in town something to prove this just sets out motivations um so it, it's it's interesting and once again we don't know if this is the only choices you'll have it's very possible that there's going to be 25 of each of these that we have to pick through and and decide it could just be because of the demo they only wanted to show three that they have working and and that are are foolproof so doesn't mean a whole lot that this is what it is right now but nonetheless it's there um so uh i hit play right yeah i did there we go um then you get to the character creator you can customize face hair scars other um and just to be completely honest this is a pretty clunky pretty clunky character creator like we just have to be upfront. we have to be straight about this because if we're not honest it's not actually going to help anything it's just going to build hype to an unhealthy level the character creator looks kind of sloppy it looks a little clunky especially got to give it to bethesda their character creator for fallout 4 was very smooth it was slick everything else about the game was gross and terrible um but like this actually does look a little bit clunky and whenever i see presets that look that weird i get a little concerned on the left you've got like broom hilga and then on the far right you've got like it looks like some pop singer from the 70s who had a one-hit wonder and then od'd on like marijuana even though that's not really possible like you see how weird they look that's just a concern to me so hopefully they polish this up and make it a little more user-friendly that's at least what i would hope for um because that's 
one of the major concerns I have just on the outset. You can choose style, um, tattoos, those types of things. I think tattoos are going to be a big thing in this game. Um, and then you define your character's stats, such as strength, constitution, intelligence, uh, reflexes, tech, and cool. Um, in terms of strength, I mean, this just like carrying capacity, overall things that you can do, athleticism, those types of things. Constitution likely has to do with uh, your resolve in conflict. So discussions, how uh, you're able to deal with significant issues like that. Uh, intelligence, fairly self-explanatory. Reflexes, likely uh, improving aim, um, improving draughts, like times, improving all of these types of things, um, making you more agile. Tech. Likely this just means that you have higher tech upgrades available or you can get higher end tech earlier in the game. So some of the implants we'll see later in the trailer, um, it's it's similar in, in that vein. So that's, that's interesting. And then cool, which is apparently a major thing in the um, cyberpunk world is uh, the cool factor and how you're viewed as um, or viewed and looked upon within the world is kind of your cool level, which is just, I mean, that's, that's just kind of fun. Like, like, it's just fun. It's just, there's no real, uh, thing to say about it. It's just kind of fun and cool and weird. Um, so yeah, the ca characters are completely customizable, Alex Alexander, completely, uh, customizable. Um, and we'll we can play through a few minutes of this actually just because uh, until once they get to the nudie girl we'll skip ahead but yeah so first things first quite clearly cyberpunk is a full first person shooter which is such a departure from what they've been doing previously uh, like so so far away from what they've been doing and i am so impressed that they've managed to make it look this good. I, I said, um, I was talking to a, a buddy of mine who's also a, another YouTuber, and we, we were chatting about this, trying to get our thoughts before we made videos on it and before we talked in public about it because we don't want to embarrass ourselves. And to be completely honest, like, um, at the outset, like, the, the fact that this doesn't just look like a total steaming pile of crap is amazing. Like, if this had even looked sort of playable, that would have been more than enough. That would have been amazing. Um, like, look at this. Look at this stealth kill. This is baller. She sticks his head underwater and then does it right there to silence it. That's pretty cool. That's a contextual kill right there. And then we'll skip ahead to this. There we go. Um, and then we skip ahead. Basically, they save the girl and they run out. It's it's in the first like eight minutes of the trailer, so you can check it out. Um, he looks a little too bulky for her. She could do better. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? She could do better. There's not many girls where the shaved head thing comes off well. A lot of the time, it just looks like you have daddy issues and don't want to deal with it in a mature way, so you shave your head. In this case, it actually looks fairly reasonable. Um, I'll give her that. I think she pulls it off. And I'm glad to see that CD Projekt Red has <laughs> not changed uh, what a lot of people enjoyed about The Witcher, shall we say. Um, which I, I do think uh, is quite nice. I think it's quite nice. Those leather pants, I got to give it to her. This NC um, like vending machine is kind of cool, actually. That got me thinking. I think... It could be really, really uh, cool to have like a, a full service, like room service vending machine sort of thing right in your apartment where you could just like order a drink or a beer or something right to your room. You wouldn't have to go out shopping. It, it makes sense. Maybe that's already a thing in skyscrapers. I don't know. Um, I don't live in a massive city, but I like this setup she's got. I like that. Um, Let's see. I, I do want to respond to this. Nick said, the amount of people I saw complaining about violence being the main focus of the demo is whack. Like, gee, a game developer wanting to showcase a major component of the game. How controversial. This is why I honestly am considering getting rid of Twitter. I know it's ironic that I have the overlay, but Twitter is just like a hive of scum and villainy. Like, really. I, I've never been on Twitter and been like, I'm glad I'm spending time doing this. It's always, this sucks. Everyone on here are monsters. It's like, being in a cesspool of mediocrity and angry stuff. I don't know what to say. It's just, I'm not impressed by, um, by Twitter. And I think 
the world would be a better place without it. I really do. It, it encourages and emphasizes everything that's wrong with modern society. And as a result, I'd like it to go bye-bye. I want to be that guy. I want to roll around on that scooter thing. Second Amendment. Oh, this is kind of cool. So I can only, you see that shop in the background, Second Amendment. Um, I, I hope that's like, that's a, uh, a weapons dealer or like a bar that could be a really cool bar that you can go to because the one thing they did say when the guy when the butt cheeks come out right after um you know that cutscene plays they do say that there's a lot of nightlife in night city and you are welcomed to partake as you can clearly see on screen so uh, that would argue that you can go out, you can like meet people, you can have romantic relationships, you can just have a one night stand as this appears to be. You can do all of that stuff. Um, so it's, yeah, like it's just kind of fun. I don't know. Again, I don't want to get overexcited. I don't want to get to the point where I'm thinking like, oh, we can go out and like meet random people and have relationships because clearly that's not been promised. But it is interesting that there are um, sort of but buddy uh <laughs> mechanics in the game which i think is kind of cool yes i'm drinking water because i'm a loser um so yeah buck a slice so probably a quick little shop you can go to nc resident night city oh we got a boxing match in the background feel the chemistry show vendor that's kind of cool so you, you can like track all sorts of stuff. Weightlifting in a biomechanical body kind of seems against the point. Um, but what do I know? What this that kind of reminds me. That boxing dude kind of reminded me of. Um, do you know that movie with, that like Hugh Jackman did with the boxing robot? Does anyone know what that was called? It was like Iron Steel or or something like that. Like it was kind of weird and industrial. If you know the name of that movie, let me. Know. Real Steel. That's what it was. Thank you, Bailey. Um, that's, that sounds right. Real steel. I think, I think that's right. Um, yeah, no, that, that movie kind of reminds me of this. Uh, if you haven't seen that movie, I actually thought it was kind of good, but then again, I'm a huge Hugh Jackman man. Like I love Hugh Jackman. Man. Um, he's my, he's my bae. He's a total man crush Monday. Total. Um, Marsala, is that Marsala Studios? I think that's a type of Greek food. No, that's Musaka. That's that's Muskaka. Um, so industrial stuff. That's kind of cool. It's reasonable to expect that we can explore all of that. This is one thing I will say. They show us a big world. They show us all of this stuff. Um, and it's not clear. The, clearly, horizontal exploration is a is a thing, but they don't ever show any sort of vertical travel. They show like some ships and or, or not ships, some cars that can fly. But it's not clear if we'll get access to those. They haven't at least mentioned it or talked about it. Um, but nonetheless, I, I hope we do because I'd love to get more vertical in this city. I can't imagine they won't allow you to do that. Um, the crowd system in this looks amazing. They said specifically they're work or they've worked very hard on improving the crowd system so that there's less repetition in the crowd. You don't see the same models repeating over and over again so that they can have more characters on screen at a time so that they can each be doing their own thing, have their own motivations, be taking selfies like that individual right there. You can be doing all sorts of craziness and everybody just goes about their business. Now there's a couple glitches you'll see in here um, that I, I picked out just by like just watching the first few minutes of this. Basically what it looks like, and uh, maybe I can pause when it happens in one of these cases. Basically what happens is to save on memory, what they'll do is the second that a character is out of view, they'll do what's called culling, where they will just stop rendering them and stop, you know, actually um, uh, processing them because they don't have to display them. So what's the point? So like behind the character right now, nothing's being rendered. Only the stuff in front of you is being rendered. Um, and there's a couple glitches that you'll see throughout the trailer where somebody will be rounding a corner and before they fully round the corner, they disappear because it, they're out of the line of sight. True, but th like the defining point for where they're out of sight is offset. So they actually, it's like these people walking here. Um, I realize you can't see my mouse, uh, but underneath the, the like burger, as they round that corner, they will despawn 
and not be rendered anymore, but the center of gravity where that happens is offset. So they disappear while you can actually still see them, which it's a small glitch, like it's a small thing to, to mess with, but um, some little Tibetan monks, a little popping in the far side, I can see that, but you're not really focused on it, so I can forgive that. Then we hop in uh, the van with the 2077 version of Will I Am, and um, clearly life has been good to him. Um, the, and the one thing that's cool, like look at the, the little TV on the back seat. So it's the boxing match. You're going to see that again uh, in like as you explore the world. It's actually kind of cool because they're all watching basically the same station, the same show, and it's all going through. And so they're all sharing the same experience. So as they go through and they watch it, you'll see this guy watching it in his car. Then you're going to see another guy watching it in his office. And then you can see it on like the bars. So it's only reasonable to assume that throughout the day and as the days change, there's going to be different content on that people are watching. And that really does a, a lot to make the world really feel connected. And like it's a, a cohesive place that they're all sharing similar experiences and yet going about their own business. Um, this is a pretty cool tutorial or a little briefing thing. These do change or tend to change a lot because they're difficult to make. Um, and so I, I wouldn't be surprised if this gets changed, to be just completely honest. I think like if anything's going to get swapped out, it's probably going to be that. Uh, just because we've seen stuff like that with uh, Watch Dogs. We've seen it with Assassin's Creed where they show off something like a menu system like that or a briefing system and then it totally gets changed. Um, so uh, we kind of go on this car ride. He's explaining uh, the, the mission to us. It's kind of cool. And as we go through, you can see all the people in the background still spawning, still looking great, still wonderful. The one thing I have noticed uh, pretty uniformly across this, this game is that the hair does seem to be a little flat. It doesn't seem to have a lot of translucency to it, which is fine. Like the rest of the game looks beautiful. And if the game is as big as they're saying, I'm not worried, um, but the hair is one of the, the weak points. And yeah, like like we were saying earlier, I, I do agree. I think that the um, UI is the one thing that does need a lot of work. They did make it very, very um, clear that you can customize the UI very, very heavily. So Dirt Girl, she sounds like fun. Go introduce yourself. If I had the controller, guess what I would do? I would introduce myself. You're damn right. Tom's Diner. That's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, now we just kind of stand and chill. What about boob physics? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, they do seem to be working. They're, they're polished out. They're quite firm. Um, and uh, one thing I will say they do manage to handle quite well is the uh, high exposures and the, the exposure shifts. So one thing you see a lot, and it was something, it was one of the downsides of the lighting engine that Assassin's Creed Unity was using, uh, besides being power hungry and causing glitches. Um, it, it looked amazing. Still, I think Unity is one of the best looking games in terms of the lighting system ever made. But one of the downsides is that it realistically dealt with light outdoors and indoors. So when you moved indoors, you had to adjust your exposure, just like your pupils have to adjust in order to deal with the light. And that would mean that the outside would look really bright and washed out. And then when you go outside, the inside looks really dark because your eyes aren't adjusted to that. So um, they do seem to be handling that quite well in this uh, system. Um, that's sort of like a Detroit become human slash Arkham City sort of detective mode that's kind of cool oh i wonder if you can go see movies i'm not like these are the things that excite me i'm i'm looking at all of this and i'm like can you go in any of these buildings can you explore any of these shops or is it limited like uh, what's the limitation this is the the place uh the place where um the screenshot for the thumbnail of this video was taken while he's getting a massage incense is nice i do like like incense smells nice look at the kitties oh wait pause there's all these kitties on that top shelf. That's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. I like it. Um, I, I appreciate incense. I'm like, I get it. Like you're trying to smell stuff that isn't gross and like artificial. But 
it it's, makes you smell like a Buddhist monk. I don't think people know this, but it makes you smell like you're about to light yourself on fire to make a point. Um, look at this. So the, this is where you see that TV again. You see that boxing match, and they're watching the same thing. I mean, it's a long boxing match, but then again, it's only been like three minutes, so it makes sense. Um, and then he goes over here, Spunky Monkey. I like that. And this is where I think a lot of the customization and a lot of the upgrades are going to come along, uh, specifically in the form of uh, bio upgrades such as these or biomechanical upgrades. And as you progress in the story, you can only uh, expect that there's going to be a whole lot of these types of adjustments made. And as you go up, like they mentioned in the um, commentary to this, there's actually the more money you get and accumulate, you can actually go in Oh, that's gross. It's an actual eyeball. Oh, 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 it's going in your, your socket. That's, oh, look at that. Okay, yummy. Oh, pop it in like a Tic Tac. Um, so, like, it, you as you get more money, you can buy uh, military-grade upgrades, and then they put those in you, and then that, that creates a much more interesting experience. Look at this. So, you can select... Let me pause this so we can look at it. Um, so, you can actually select Kiroshi Optical Scanner Mark One. Um, basic scanner scans objects to gather basic information and progress quest. Okay, so I guess that's just mandatory for this quest. Um, and this is one thing that not a lot of people have talked about and that they didn't really mention. Um, look at the cost. So there's the cost, the 300 E's, but above that, humanity cost. So it stands to reason that there's a set amount of humanity that you have and as that gets depleted you become less human you become more machine which only makes sense and uh, that's a holdover from the original game as well which is kind of cool but um, as you lose humanity I can only expect that there's going to be consequences with that when you're dealing with people that have more humanity where they look on you lesser um, or as a lesser individual because you're less human so I actually really like that, and it seems like a really cool consequence to upgrading, becoming super powerful. It's sort of like the the um, you can't have your cake and eat it too mentality, where you can do some cool stuff. You can upgrade your character pretty far, but you can't do whatever you want, otherwise there's going to be consequences. Um, so there's the Kiroshi Optical Scanner Mark II, basic scanner with upgrade, identifies structural weak points, machines, and vehicles, which is kind of cool. And remember, these are the basic upgrades. These are like the bare bones beginning of the game upgrade so just imagine what there's going to be if this is what they're starting you on i my brain hurts to think of where they're going next um so after that subdermal grip enables the use of locked weapons with minus 50 or with 50 percent damage reduction not negative 50 percent damage reduction because then that would be double negative and that would be weird um increases melee damage which is kind of cool so that could be interesting and so there's just there there's a uh, variability within gameplay um styles which i actually kind of uh, appreciate and subdermal grip i think she ends up getting that one all the fun little scans on the right side to show you that you have brain cancer and then <laughs> I'm ready. Carve away. <laughs> that's uh, that's how you know you got a keeper. That's how you know you got to stick with this one. She's a winner. She is a winner. Um, okay. Yeah. Now this is the part where it's just like I get, we're. I know we're probably gonna get to this point in humanity. Like we're totally gonna get to this point. Oh, and look at that. Four needles just filling you with Vicodin. That's the real experience. The whole game is a dream because he just doped you up so much. Can you imagine? That would be great. <laughs> that would be really funny. Is if like the whole game, you go on this epic quest and then you wake up in that chair and he's like, dude, you passed out. <laughs> it wasn't that much. Your tolerance is terrible. That's horrible. Okay. Yeah, and then they pop it right in or take it out. And then this is kind of cool. So he takes the eye out. He links you in. So it's like wireless. While it's operating on your arm, you can actually see it operating. He grabs the eyeball we were just looking at. You can kind of see yourself. And then he sticks you right back in. Nice and smooth. Isn't that just beautiful? Isn't that just beautiful? So 
it's a really interesting way of upgrading and uh, expanding. And then look at that, the arm blades, which um, we saw in the like original little trailer thing that they showed off. The, the little arm sides, I think is what they call them, where it comes out of your forearm, which is kind of cool. And that's, that's pretty cool. And again, like these are the basic, basic upgrades. So these are the things, this is almost just like your basic UI. This is not going to be a, like a, a, a crazy upgrade far in. Oh, look at that. That's weird. Okay, this is a weird thing to say, but like, do you think that would be like, is she going to become a lefty now? Like in the nighttime, if you know what I mean? Like she has a nice guy over and he's like, I know you're tired, but can you help me out? And then she's like, yeah, I have high durability grip hand now. Let me show you what I can do. I don't think that'd be nice. And then as with every successful video game, you need an inhaler. So he gave you that. Um, and then yeah, rocket powered finger hands. Yeah. Fingering hands. <laughs> I, I saw finger hands. I, yeah, fingering hands. Um, yeah, so there there we go. Then we leave, and he goes back to watching the boxing match. Go on, punch him. It's kind of cool. And this is like the thing. If, if any element of the trailer is scripted, like it's going to be little stuff like that. So I don't want to get overly hyped and excited. But Cyber or, or CD Projekt Red is very conscientious of the uh, effects of extreme hype. Um, for sure. So we go back, come out, out to Jackie, who's like our, our right hand man, our buddy, our buddy, old pal, old friend. He's got a man bun, which is how, you know, he's for real. He's down to party. Um, he's a pretty cool dude. And he has a weird accent and he constantly calls you all sorts of names. I don't understand. I think they're Spanish, although I'm not sure. I like that guy's shorts. Um, and yeah, that is a pretty nice car. Oh, the car that drove in front of it was way shinier. I kind of like that more. So, and th this is the thing that like, we'll just not know until we play it is the driving mechanics, how it works, how it feels. The one thing I will say, look at the area above the worker label center screen. Look right above that. There's like a club up there and it's called hot mess. Do you see the, the label ad above the door? The, the club is called hot mess and there's like a girl pole dancing up there. Isn't that great? It's just those little details, little details. That looks like the new Ford. What I forget what it's called. It's that car that John Cena sold, even though it was locked under contract. Um, like he signed a contract saying he'd buy it for like $450,000. But part of the contract said that he couldn't sell it or a verbal agreement said he couldn't sell it for like two years because they wanted to race it as a race car, but you can't be classified in like a certain category that they wanted to be classified in unless you make at least like 499 of them. And so they made 499 and sold them to like major celebrities. John Cena brought, bought one and then he sold it promptly for like a million dollars. Um, and this car kind of looks like that. This is kind of cool. So she tells Jackie to take the wheel. And so he starts steering here. So now you're on rails, but you don't feel like you're on rails, which is the really cool part uh, about a sequence like this is that it's it's so fluid but it's also very controlled so they end you up in the same like this same spot that they want you to end up in you take over control of the car and everything's back to normal just like one and done that's how quickly that happens and that's not easy to program to just have like jackie be able to intelligently take the the wheel that's that's pretty crazy that's pretty crazy and like, this is part of what I'm saying is the city is so vertical. I have to imagine we're going to get access to some sort of flying vehicle. It, it's like, it hasn't been confirmed. It hasn't been mentioned. Um, if it has, let me know in the comment section. I, or I need to know. Um, I haven't seen it confirmed from CD Projekt Red though. I can't imagine they won't include it. There's got to be that consideration. Um, you know, it'd be like playing Grand Theft Auto V, but not being able to fly planes or helicopters. Uh, with this, I will say pop in. There is pop in if you look out ahead, like in the top third of the screen. But once again, like, does anyone know what this was running on? Um, I'm not sure if it's a PC build or if it's like a Xbox One X build 
or PS4 Pro build. I'm not sure if they ever mentioned what this was running on. Um, is it running on PC? Uh, GTX 1080 Ti, i7 8700K. I mean, that, that makes sense. Um, they have communicated that this is a next generation experience. Now, does that mean, like, that's the weird thing about saying it's next generation. It's like current generation consoles are defined as next generation consoles. <laughs> what are we going to call the next generation? Next, next generation? I don't know. But this is kind of cool. So this didn't need to happen. We didn't need to go and meet with this lady. We could have gone straight ahead because basically the guy in the car asked us to go and get him this little robot from a warehouse. That's like being guarded by these bad guys who are uh, pretty powerful. This is a corporate agent though, and she potentially can help us do that if we get her something in return. So um, with that, it's, yeah, I, I kind of, sorry, I got distracted with the, the car. I was trying to figure out what car that reminded me of. Um, so like that's that's interesting I, again like these little quests it's pretty common for cd project to have these sorts of branching options where they give you a task and then they give you a few different ways to complete it um and to achieve the goals that they outlay for you or out lay out for you um i'm interested to see how badly this could go down because based on your reactions of course for the demo they end up like working with you and you know it's a demo so they do that sort of thing but it's interesting to me to see how badly this could have gone could they have just shot you and you'd have to start over or would they just leave you out in the cold and then make the following sequence way harder i'm not sure um so like here you can grab the gun you can go for his gun right there but it's also very risky and they're very high level so they would probably shoot the guy back behind you right there or in front of you behind the, the chick with the mullet um and they're very high level so it'd be very hard to overtake them and, and take them out so um it's up to you you like you can choose to try to do that to try to fight back or you can just kind of sit tight and try to talk your way out of it which is also kind of really cool um then branching narratives you can go through you can do all of that stuff which is cool this is where like the i will say the health bars and like all of that ui like down where my face is now all of that looks pretty clunky um and just kind of i don't know i don't i get it's supposed to look industrial and kind of glitchy but i'm not sure if i love it i'm not sure if i love it um he's standing awful close like what is he doing what is he doing? Like, what bodyguard holds the gun, like, right here? That is very stupid. That's very stupid. They got a bot I want. Give me funds to buy that bot, and you can do what you want with the gang. Um, she just wants her mole, her beauty mark back. That's all she's ever wanted. That's all, all she ever wanted. Um, yeah, no, in this, in this cinematic sequence, it, likely you can't move. I mean, you could move if you wanted to go for the gun, that would be moving. It would just potentially be a pretty stupid thing to do unless you had a real plan and understood the consequences, knowing that they were going to kill that guy back there. So Anthony Gilchrist, um, yeah. So you go back up the stairs, they drive off, the drone follows them. That's kind of cool. My guess is we're going to see them again. Then we go up the stairs. We meet Jackie again. He's chilling. Never came down to help us because we didn't get in a dog fight. But if we had tried to go for that gun and started shooting, uh, he would have come down and helped. Um, so that's kind of cool. Again, it would have allowed us to, to make that potential mistake. It would have allowed us to potentially screw up. But instead they uh we we decided to play the game the way we did and then we just went about our business as you do as you do um and then we drive through and see this is where like that sort of dynamic lighting system can come back to haunt you is it's hard to balance that light especially in severe shadows like this um, especially in big cities when there's not a lot of cloud cover because cloud cover tends to diffuse the light which is why you'll see a lot of games like Grand Theft Auto they'll use clouds to cover it I mean they're also not that concerned with 
realistic lighting patterns with clouds but when there's just direct sunlight the shadows are much darker than the bright areas so a video game has real trouble dealing with that as opposed to how your human eye does it so normally you're like the game just kind of mimics both and makes the shadows yes less severe which is what it seems to be doing here but you know it still looks natural which is good and then we hit the intercom they're using like an iphone 4 as an intercom um and uh we're trying to get into the the gang hideout as you would guess because there's pictures of skeletons which is always downright spoopy and so we can use our scanner we see that those are turrets this is a really dark scene so like it's tough to say on this display what it would be like um that rhymed you're welcome i'd, I'd really be interested to see how this looks on like um an hdr display like an oled or a premium led tv or a premium gaming monitor I think it, it could really, really help to have that HDR display. And I think that's what it's being developed for is with that in mind. Um, then we scan it. So that's kind of cool. So you don't immediately recognize it as a mine. You see it as a mine and then you take mental note of it. You scan it and then it kind of deciphers what it is. So there's a ton of mines. All of those little red things down there, those are all mines. So if they want to, they could really really screw this up oh so that's kind of cool so jackie's thrown out that they could have taken him by surprise so you could have gone in guns blazing and just tried to wreak havoc or you can go in and try to follow their lead um which is kind of what we're doing here because the the chick gave us enough money to buy the uh machine that we need as long as we plug her little chip into the computer and so we hop in the service elevator that's kind of cool. Oh, we're going to an office. I wonder if Dwight's going to be there. And then, ooh, th these are the guys we saw pictures of. They have the, like, optical um, bio enhancement. So, like, the front end, of, or front end of their face has been, like, cut away. So their humanity is pretty well gone. But as a result, I'm sure they're very, very powerful. So I'm sure it's, like, giving up constitution and your cool factor and all of that stuff. Uh, in exchange for strength and those types of things um so it could be really cool to see how all of this plays in because as of right now we just don't know they could give us a couple of ideas but there's not a whole lot yeah i, I wouldn't i wouldn't mess with with jackie what's up jack wow he looks like one of my exes got what uh seven eyes a mouth that stretches ear to ear hair that looks like a braided horse mane a red inhaler that gets you high checking off every box my goodness um I, i'm also really interested to see how they deal with the topic of drugs in the game because quite clearly that's a major uh element to cyberpunk like the the original game drugs are like a major consideration it's a big thing that goes on in the game we didn't see a whole lot of it we see like the little stuff we see the biomechanics and like those types of things um but there's not a whole lot beyond that uh don't worry james there's going to be a lot of action here in just a second they're building up this is one of the tough things about gameplay trailers is i don't envy the guy that has to come up with what they should show because on the one hand you can just show the narrative stuff. You can try to establish the world and show them that you've been like responsible with the the sor uh, source material. That's the word I was looking for. Um, but ooh, that's a big dude. That's a big dude. Oh, he's not happy. He's not happy. He's like a cheap version of Bane. That's funny. Got fifty large on this credit chip. Why, why couldn't they just use, like, debit cards? Why do they have to have, like, really futuristic-looking, like, credit check or credit chips or whatever they called it? Dexter Deshaun. That's funny. Oh. We'll pay for the bottom and be on our way. I have black 
uh, what are those called? Fingernails. That's what they're called. Oh, what did... I thought she shot him for a second. So he's going to take the money, but he's not aware that plugging that in is actually going to get the chick what she needs. So we're expecting the second he plugs it in, he's going to find out that didn't work. Um, it's got a vector. They're breaking in. Yep. So then this is where the action starts. So using some of those drugs, you can go super slow-mo, which is kind of cool because you see, like you fire the weapons and then like you see them travel and then time starts up again. It's really cool. So you can see that they're actually using physical objects to represent the bullets. They're not doing any sort of line of sight timing crap. <sighs> Pardon me. Long day. So we go along. And then what, what are they doing? Looted items. Spec control trip. Neural bridge used to control the bot insert into chip socket so we got the little control thing we need and then we plug it into our face yes that's kind of cool that's a cute little robot i like it it's like a little pet a little pet like the one thing i will say these types of dark scenes it's very common for those to be used in these sorts of gameplay demos because the game isn't fully optimized yet. And when you have really dark areas on screen where the GPU can just render it as black, it's much easier to hit higher frame rates. That's why Doom looked so dark um, during the tr initial trailers. And when the game came out, it was a lot brighter. So I fully expect this to be much brighter by the time we get it released. Um, it, it could also be a combination of that and then also the displays. So. You know, it might be a complete non-issue when you're going straight from this source into an HDR display, like problem solved. Um, quick little hacking, or you could have forced your way through, depending on your abilities and what you have leveled up, which is kind of cool. Let me go through, double jump. I'm not sure how I feel about the double jump, to be honest. Like, it looks like it's going to be fun and feel good, but I'm, I'm not sure how I, how I feel. And yeah, I'll be straight up. My prediction about this was way, way wrong way wrong i thought uh that they weren't going to show off gameplay for a few more months and then they show off this like four days after that i I'll gotta give it to them a uh, cd project i said like i don't think they'll show it off for a few more months but i don't know their timeline and they've surprised me before so and then look at this ricocheting so real-time ricochets which are like this just breaks my brain look at that how cool is that? That like adds a whole nother level of consideration. Like you're not just shooting, you're ricocheting. You can shoot through walls. Um, you can do all sorts of craziness. And it's not just going to be like all walls are made out of paper mache. It actually depends on the ammo you're using. It depends on a lot of stuff. Ooh. Shotgun. And uh, those numbers, you can turn them off. Same thing with like... Um, with oh his legs oh that's awesome that's hot that's the new hotness right there um yeah no that was that was pretty cool i'll give it to him i'll give that one to him i, I like that a lot i like that a lot and then we go through and like this weapon is one of the higher level weapons apparently based on what the guy was saying um so it's like a 87 dps um seems fairly decent but it actually can track uh the target and so you can actually sort of use steering and carefully controlled ricochets which is pretty cool i don't know so much of this like there's a lot of really cool elements i'm not sure how i how i feel about it yet but so much of this is just going to be experimentation getting your hands on it and actually trying it um the the other thing i was going to say the numbered damage counters they look cool i grant you but they do break immersion to be completely honest um they've given a reason in game for those to be there you know you got your optical chip and so it kind of boosts that whatever so they do have that going for them unlike uh like assassin's creed odyssey or, or origins 
where they just included it and they're like, yeah, you can turn it off if you want, whatever. Um, and uh, uh, the shotgun, oh, Jesus Christ, my legs. <laughs> and then he falls. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. That's beautiful. I don't, what is this? A door factory? Is that what this is? What are they doing? Oh, that guy's jumping around. So then we're just trying to escape. I'm sorry I'm so yawny. This is what I get for waking up at 6 a.m. So I'm assuming the four means level four. Um, I'm not sure if they've mentioned anything about top levels. But if it's anything like The Witcher, if they're working with the same scaling system, they're probably looking at like uh, anywhere from 40 to 50, which would be reasonable. And then if they add in DLC after that, go from like 40, 50 to like 50, 60, another DLC round, a big DLC up to 70. Like, oh, is it bad that I'm already getting bummed thinking that once this game comes out, we'll have to wait another like four years for their next game? I'm sure they're working on it. Oh, here's those blades. Look at that. Oh, that's hot. That's the new hotness right there. So, like, her arms are completely fake. She could go all night. She's a winner. She is a winner. Oh, boom goes the dynamite. If you could get a pair of these inserted in your arms, would you? I'm not sh I think I might. Like, I'm, first of all, forearm strength would be insane. Like, that would be awesome. But, um, I'm not sure what that was trying to accomplish. Jump up. Again, double jump, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Part of the reason I think they can do that is, of course, because it's first person, so you don't see what their legs are doing. If you were trying to do that with third person, it would look super, super stupid. Um, and then they loop back around. They got one of the nice militaristic weapons. And then like a mini boss fight, which is kind of cool. Because these things were sort of used in The Witcher, but there weren't a whole lot of like mini boss fights to a crazy extent. A lot of it was like, occasionally you fight a giant toad and then you go about your business and then you fight like a couple monsters here and there. Um, but this is kind of cool. Look, he flips the car up. So it actually serves as shelter. And then you loop around and it, it just may it basically looks like it's meant to be incredibly fast paced and to have you move in a lot. They want you to use the double jump. They want you to do all of that. And uh, I'm glad because that's where I think a lot of the fun is going to be had. Um, but that's why navigation is so important. It's not just going to be a matter of like convenience where they're like, okay, we should add in roach so that you can explore places. Like, no, you need to have a sturdy nav system. You can't half-ass this. Um, it's got to be so, so sturdy, which again is why I just can't imagine there's not some sort of um, like quick vertical navigation system. There's got to be helicopters, like some sort of flying car that you get access to. There's got to be something like that. I can't imagine they wouldn't include that. Then you take them out. That looked relatively easy. I'm sure it'd be harder on harder difficulties. Usually for these things, they play it on like super, super easy. Um, yeah, no, I would say the, the movement does totally look like it's borrowed from Titanfall or at least heavily, heavily influenced, as they say nowadays, um, which I, I think is fine. Like, to be honest, I, I don't really have any major issue with that. Um, like, uh, with sci-fi especially, there's only so many things you can do, to be completely honest. Like, there's only so many things you can do. At, at some point, it all just starts to look the same. And so to do a futuristic world in a creative and different way is really tough but it's saying something. See, like, look at all the flying stuff up top, up vertically. There's no way they're not going to... I know I'm sticking on this. I know it seems repetitive that that's all I'm talking about. But I think it's such an important point, whether or not you'll be able to fly and access a vertical space in the world, or if you're going to be relegated to the streets, except for select um, cutscenes and that sort of thing. So I have to imagine they're going to include it. I just have to imagine. 
And then Jackie smoking her little cigarette. Do you think future cigarettes are going to be just the same? Like in a hundred years, will they have not like improved the design of the cigarette at all? Or is everyone going to be vaping? Everyone's going to be wearing beanies, Hawaiian shirts, even though they're 22. They're going to have really straggly, like puby beards. It's going to be awesome. That's the future of our country. I can't wait. My girl V, how's business looking? B biz looking. Not business. Biz. Oh, the afterlife. I want to name a, a bar afterlife. That could be cool. And uh, there we go. Like that street cred. That's the other thing. So there's cool and then there's street cred. Street cred is what apparently unlocks new areas of the map. So. It's not like a lot of it is open to you at first, but part of the way that you get access to more of the land is by uh, getting higher street cred, by performing actions and helping out the city, doing things like that, which is kind of cool. Um, and then we drive out and we go about our, our business. Like, it's pretty cool. First person games, I, I will say, I'm going to have to like legit train for this because first person games actually do have a tendency to make me sort of um motion sick which is unfortunate but they really can do that so i have to be very very careful with first person shooters and that type of thing because it actually can make me sick so i think i'm just gonna have to really push myself um to get to the point where i just get over it um uh let's see uh da -da 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 -da. any specs out for this game yet no not really i mean they're saying that it's releasing on current gen consoles um release date not out there we don't know if they're showing gameplay off like this, and apparently you can play the game from start to finish already, my guess potentially we could be looking at like a a winter of 2019 release date, which actually would line up with like the four year mark, which would be really cool. Um, Banana Brains, do you think there will be any areas in Cyberpunk 2077 that aren't urban? I actually heavily, heavily doubt it. Um, I think you'll get into like slightly industrial levels but i don't think you're gonna get into like countrysides. i just it doesn't seem to be the focus of cyberpunk in the original game like the tabletop game it's all about um night city and night city is like the main character all of the other characters are just second tier so maybe like maybe but i i don't see any evidence for it at this point but i would love for them to surprise me once again like they surprised me with this um because lord knows they did Let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see. I don't see. I lost track of the chat. I'm sorry. I'm the worst. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, Jonathan had same issues with games like Doom. Yeah, the Nintendo Switch version. Whenever frame rates are up in the air, who knows? Uh, it just can. It can get real messy real quick. Um, Oh yeah, can you imagine if we get Cyberpunk 2077 and The Last of Us Part 2 and potentially a sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn all in the same year? Holy balls. I don't think we'll get a sequel necessarily. I think we'll get shown off a sequel because that's what Grill is working on right now. Um, and like that'll be the real Horizon Zero Dawn, to be honest. Ooh, updates are available, um, which is why like my body is ready. Noir as you do um yeah no i think it's going to be content heavy it's hard to say how big it's going to be or how all of that's going to work just because like it's it's really really hard to say it just it, it really is hard to say oh it goes to toshima um that could be cool i haven't really done a lot of digging into that um that could be cool uh, I, da, 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 I'd assume they probably have different areas based on quality class. So there'll probably be poor slum area as well as the richer area. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And I think that's what street cred is going to be used for. Um, was that on Xbox one X? We don't know. Likely. I think what the people in the chat were saying was that that was running off of a PC, which would make sense. I mean, usually, um, console optimization happens late in the stages and PC development, especially for a studio like CD project, they tend to develop everything for the PC first and then everything for consoles comes afterwards, which is just, I mean, that's kind of natural. Oh, death stranding. I still am not even sure what 
to think about that. Let, okay, I don't want to go on too much longer because we've been going for a little while and I, I don't want to keep all of you up too late. But um, let's just talk about Spider-Man for a second. My body is so ready for Spider-Man. Initially, I was very uh, hesitant. I, I wasn't sure if I would like it or if I'd jump into it. But the more I've seen, the more I've become like settled into it. And I think... I think uh, it could. I, I think it's gonna be great. My body is ready, and I think uh, I think it's gonna be fun. I um I I'm going to lose a fair amount of time to that game, and my my body is ready. But with all of this said, I I do want to say uh like I said at the top of the show, in case you came in a little bit later, we uh the the next critique is done, and uh, we'll be going out to Patreon subscribers um probably by the end of tonight. So in the next few hours um if not early tomorrow and so you guys will be able to watch the video before anyone else on the planet does uh because you help make all of this possible which i am greatly appreciative for um somebody was asking about rewards or the uh the like tiered gifts that sort of thing on um on patreon and basically what happens is patreon doesn't even give me your information so like if you're at a tier where i say i'm going to write you like a, a personalized note or we're going to get on skype and talk about stuff as some of the higher tiers allow um uh in order to do that you have to get past the first of the month when they charge everybody the first time around and then they'll give me that information otherwise i can't actually look at it so um if, if you're waiting to get something like that because you joined up it's just because they haven't given it to me but once i get that information i will pass it off and and uh i will send you out your stuff don't don't worry about that um as for other stuff yeah uh and then the last thing yes of course spider-man i kind of forgot we were in black and white actually um <laughs> as for the last thing yes yeah, spider-man apparently there's spoilers i don't know how there's already spoiler stuff going out in the world but apparently there are spoilers going out there so be careful when you're watching videos when you are uh looking into um, anything Spider-Man related, it does look like there's going to be a fair amount of spoilers ahead. I, that was spoilers, spoilers. Um, but actually, there we go. There we go. We actually, um, for uh, technical reasons, which are overly complicated um, and, and lame, uh, we actually can't do a final flush tonight, which is probably actually kind of good just because they tend to viewership tends to drop off pretty steeply once we begin that so we'll just end it there thank you all for watching honestly and truly i really do appreciate all of you who came out this was a a peak night we had uh yeah three thousand people come out tonight um to chill with us for an hour and that's pretty amazing and so i want to say thank you uh to everybody and if you're watching this afterwards thank you for watching i love you all i'll see you in the next video bye bye Blah, 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 blah.